so I'm interested in uh, the phenomenology of consciousness, and uh, you know, uh, you know, in this conference too, uh, you know, why do the opinions on basic aspects of consciousness differ so much among scholars? For example, you have witnessed the debate between these two people, right? Daniel Dennett doesn't believe uh, in Corey. I mean, it's, he says it's rubbish, right? I mean, and David Chambers thinks Corey are central to the heart problem. I'm on this side, by the way. <laughs> and uh, this puzzling dichotomy, right? Uh, both Daniel Dennett and David Chambers, if one of them is, you know, stupid, then we are happy, right? But, you know, both of them are such intelligent people. So how come we have this kind of dichotomy? And uh, possible explanations. Uh, maybe they are referring to differences in legal issues. Maybe they have different interpretations of it. Well, there's um, some logical fallacy in one form or, or both of the parties. And this is the stance I'm taking now. Uh, different, maybe they have different metacognition of phenomenal experience before any theorizing starts. Meaning, you know, we have, you know, each of us, you know, because Claudia is such a fundamental aspect of phenomenal experience, we kind of assume that everyone has the same coin. Everyone has the same understanding of coin. But what if there's a heterogeneity in this basic understanding of the phenomenology? Then, of course, theorizing will be different, right? We usually focus only on this part, and you know this part. So we are not aware of this, and probably that's why uh, Janet and Thomas don't agree. So, uh, I studied how the heterogeneous actually is the metacognition of phenomenal experience among people. I studied uh, more than a thousand people, and I found that um, actually uh, not many people are actually aware of the existence of quarry. Of course, you can argue this is a natural language based survey, so there are many ambiguities, but there's this manifest heterogeneity, and also a majority of people don't understand the concept of quarry. At all, and um, you know, and uh, there are some additional correlations of the metacognition choir with various cognitive traits. For example, I studied how people's awareness of choir correlates with understanding of the mathematical and physical sciences and calculus, how many series. I'm a physicist, so I know all these things: continuous theory, hypothesis, phase point theory, relativity theory, quantum mechanics, physicalism, statistical mechanics, entropy, and superconductivity. And uh, there's a weak relation between the number of items they knew out of the 10 items that I have seen with uh, awareness of quality. Uh, similar research into how they, uh, the awareness of quality correlates with uh, knowledge in cognitive sciences, like metacognition, scale area, value problem, blah, blah, blah. And then again, uh, there's uh, this interesting correlation between, uh, well, you can argue that, you know, as you get well versed, in these sciences, that you are able to express your, you know, experience in the most sophisticated way. So that kind of uh, result, uh, effect might explain this kind of result. But anyway, uh, there are some further interesting correlations, right? You know, uh, for example, uh, Korea, awareness of Korea, and also awareness belief in free will, seem to correlate with developed political views, <laughs> um, whether one is against the death penalty. I am against the death penalty, but anyway. And uh, so this uh, kind of situation is interesting. And uh, for me, the most interesting result was this. Uh, awareness of Korea increases with age. Uh, you know, this is a very large sample of modern present subjects. And well, there are many ways to explain this. But one way to explain why how, how awareness of Korea increases with the age is what I call an uh, enlightenment hypothesis. <laughs> You start as a Korean discovery fiber. You, you don't actually realize that there are such uh, richness of Korea in your phenomenal experience. Then, there's one moment of you know, realization. Hey, I have this rich set of Korea. And you know, once this transformation is done, then there's no way going back. I'm saying this because uh, I was a physicist and I didn't actually realize the serious uh, problem of Korea until I was 32. I'm 51 now, so that was 19 years ago. So I, I, can, I can kind of imagine that uh, Daniel Dennett is in the before Korea era, right? In my case, you know. At the time, I, I thought that everything is explainable by equations and so on. 
But the idea really is that there is a serious problem in Korea. I suspect that maybe Daniel Bennett might, with all his philosophical associations, might be still in that that. Yeah. <laughs> now this is a very interesting <laughs> joke slide. Uh, it appears that Mac OS users are more aware of uh, Korea. <laughs> See this country? Yeah, this is, and the P is 0 0.0006, so it's a quite statistical uh, significant result. There's no statistical uh, difference in Vs of free will between Mac OS and Windows users. Now, uh, I'm going to focus on this interesting uh, result. It appears that uh, there's no correlation between Korea awareness and paranormal beliefs. But there is a significant correlation between belief in free will and paranormal beliefs. So, you know, I, I don't believe in this state. You know, it's, it's just rubbish, right? But, you know, it's interesting. It tells us something about the nature of free will. Now, I know you are sophisticated philosophers and you have been debating free will in terms of all these wonderful concepts and also we had compatibilism mentioned. I'm a compatibilist too, but anyway, there's all these wonderful arguments. And, you know, traditionally, uh, free will have been uh, debated in the theo theological uh, tradition also. And there's this uh, ongoing debate whether, you know, this gentleman there pointed out that whether free will is a random process or not, right? And uh, actually, uh, free will is something that we worry a lot about right? in our daily life. So it's interesting that uh, my, it's interesting to realize that free will is actually an illusion, as you, some of you might have uh, suggested. And uh, Wegener, who is no longer with us, sadly, uh, he wrote a series of Nathaniel's papers arguing that free will is mind's mind best trick. And there's a, I think uh, there are some supporting evidence like choice blindness. I, I'm sure you know. And facilitated communication is a particularly interesting instance because you ascribe agency to a different party. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, really, it's different who is choosing the keyboard, but, you know, if you ascribe the agency to this uh, gentleman here. And so suppose that free will is an illusion, like this is an illusion, and free will is an illusion. Why is it there? I think we in order to study the nature of free uh, illusion, I think uh, you know, one of the interesting aspects is to study the manipulation with paranormal beliefs. So that's why I took a you know, further survey of more than 2,000 people. And uh, I asked people specifically if they believe in these, uh, you know, <laughs> paranormal things like are you false, astrology, reincarnation, and psi. And I constructed paranormal beliefs for. And yes, I confirmed my earlier result that there's a pretty correlation between free will belief and paranormal beliefs for. There's a pretty correlation. And uh, these are the questions that, you know, so next I ask if uh, free will correlated with paranormal knowledge uh, score. So these are the paranormal knowledge uh, uh, questions like area 51, grades, you know, all these things, majestic 12. Do, do you know what majestic 12 is? Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, there's actually no correlation between uh, free will and paranormal knowledge score. Now, uh, there's uh, some gender differences. You know, I'm not ravaging women in any way here, but, you know. <laughs> uh, women tend to be in more in paranormal beliefs, but this actually uh, confirms earlier studies. Um, but uh, average knowledge score about paranormal phenomena are not significantly different between males and females. And uh, correspondingly, females tend to believe more in uh, free will. Oh, by the way, I should have explained. Uh, free will theory means that people, uh, what kind of belief they have, if they, uh, the humans have free will as a theory, right? Uh, free will practice means whether in their daily life they are actually choosing the uh, action free. So there these two different aspects of free will. So here, females are statistically uh, more uh, you know, prone to believe in free will. So, uh, I think I've done my talk very quickly. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, the reason why I, you know, you know this, you probably, uh, I suspect that you don't really like this uh, field of experimental philosophy. Uh, you know, your philosophy was a great, I, I suspect the majority of people here are philosophers, but I kind of suspect that. And, uh, you know, when I listen to uh, a very interesting 
person Daniel, like, like Daniel Dennett. You know, his reasonings are really watertight. Uh, you know, that's great. But I just totally <coughs> suspect that you know, there's something more basic before any theorizing uh, uh, starts. So I think it, it's a generally interesting phenomenon uh, and experiment to uh, study what are the natures of metacognition of people as regards Korea and free will. And I, I'm not a philosopher, I'm, you know, I'm quite bad at philosophizing, but uh, I think this kind of thing, uh, data might actually uh, stimulate you guys to come up with uh, interesting, some interesting arguments or so on. And I probably finish with this, very, uh, this is something that I really like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice country, isn't it? So, you know, actually some studies have shown that believing in free will or believing in one's ability in general promotes one's uh, mental well-being. So, you know, what is, the first interesting question is, why, you know, if you take a compatibilist view, um, you know, if you believe that free will is an illusion, why do we have that illusion at all? You know, it's in the first place, and I think that kind of question can be answer, uh, answered by looking into the way people uh, form this very important illusion of freedom. So that's my point.